much for the invitation and for the presentation and for being here. So this is a paper that we wrote. So this is joint with Jenny Atebele, uh, more or less a year ago. And we will talk about this. This is the first talk. So tomorrow you will have a second talk, more related to the categorical aspect. So today, this talk is going to be more on bi-rational geometry. The, the bi-rational geometry that has to be used. And also, I want to talk about the collage of Albarron correspondence. And that means I, I will talk about these T resolutions, these M resolutions, and the new N resolutions. And then I also want to give an example, an application on Dolbechev surfaces. And before starting, uh, I would like to mention that more recently, uh, I wrote a, a joint paper with a student of mine, which is called the Bi-Rational Geometry of Markov Numbers. This is jointly on part of which is a student at UC, at UC, this is my university, UC Chile. And you can find this by rational geometry summarized in this paper. And there is this motivation, this connection with this Markov uniqueness conjecture. So in case you want that, uh, let me take a look. So I end that parenthesis and now I start with the idea. Do you have all the solutions? It's only P M. All is definitely missing. Okay, so the idea here. If I have this, so this is going to be the main thing. There is a chain of rational curves, so gamma 1 up to gamma r. The gamma i's are all rational. And this is inside of a surface. W. And this surface is not, so this is the projective. With only wall singularities, so it's a singular surface. The singularities are going to be denoted by EI, and so then we draw them G0, G1, ER, minus 1. And so the notation for these singularities is the following. I, I will explain that in the next four. But it was mentioned already that we have this type of notation for C important in high dimensions of these surfaces. Where the GCE and then AI is one. So these are the types of singularities that you have here. And now this is inside. So there is a smoothing of this W. Because it's triple. That is fiber. Uh, and now now here. Over a disk. And this is the special fiber. Zero. And now the general fiber here is going to be a WT that is non-singular projective surface. And it is over non-zero. So you have this smoothing of W. And now out of this, 
because you have this situation. Uh, ah, I have to put the assumptions. Now I will write down assumptions here that I will use all the time. Assumptions one from ten in the paper. One, two, three, four. So number two is about the invariance of the surface. So the regularity of this W and the geometric genus of the W are going to be zero. Something very important that I forgot. Uh, this triple has canonical class two cartier. And so Locally, the deformation of these singularities are very particular. Are the ones that have minimum fiber with minimum number equal to zero. So this is important. Otherwise, it would be something else. Okay, so you have this numerical invariance and also an assumption that there exists. Let me draw the assumption. There exists something like this a divisor. This uh, by a on W, uh, which is is uh, a complementary toric boundary to this gamma one. So I forgot one thing. Let me. Resolve singularities here. And now, if you resolve singularities, and uh, you will see, so the exceptional divisor is going together with the gamma i's, is going to be a chain of rational curves. So, in particular, the gamma i's are toric boundaries. And here you have the a, it's going to be like a continuation. And so, a high divisor a on w. Uh, which is the uh, boundary for gamma one and Cartier everywhere else. So there, the conclusion. These are going to be assumptions that I will be out. Um, the conclusion is that there exists. An exceptional collection of types of bundles. You should buy, or let me write down the exceptional collection, it will be like the R. So for each singularity, you will have a vector bundle. On WD, such that the bank. Of the EI is NI, and this N it is the index of the singularity. And I will write down the first uh, churn class of EI, which is minus NI. And now, parenthesis, and you put A and continue gamma 1 up to gamma I. Yeah, so when, when it's zero, you put only A. So when it's one, you put A in gamma one and so on. Okay, so we have that. Now, say that we also have that uh, this chain, so this is only with two and three. And now say, moreover, that this chain contracts a simply quotient singularity. singularity. So the picture will be like this. Now I will replace it. We have something like this. And here we have a simply quotient singularity. And say also that we have um, 
Oh, we got this, and then when you have that, so let me call this W1, we will have a blow down of the deformation. So this is going to be inside of a W1, and a morphism like that, and this is going to be over D. But now, an extra requirement here will be that we don't have any obstructions to deform, so that we will choose a deformation of <clears throat> a local deformation of this singularity so that the general fiber, general fibers here are isomorphic. And this is H2 of D double bar, say that this is C. And this is not too strange. There are many, many examples where, where, where this happens. Let me remind you that in minus canonical class of W bar is B and F, then this is true. So if you have, for example, that situation. Can you ask him something about the singularity of W bar? This one? No, no, no. This one? Yes. Uh, no? No? So is the singularity given by this rational drawdown? Mm -hmm. No, no rational drawdown. It's drawdown of the deformation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then uh, we can modify modify W over D. Uh, to have a similar situation. So, uh, values uh, chains of the same length with different wall singularities so that we have different collections. But in, in particular, there will be, so let me put it like this, there will be uh, a chain, so same amount of rational field, which is positive with respect to canonical class, and a chain that is negative with respect to canonical class. We give you exceptional collections with particular properties. So let me put a plus for the one coming from. So here, when I put a plus, means that, that uh, gamma i plus dot k, the corresponding the decay of the corresponding W plus is positive or zero, and then for the other it's going to be negative. Okay, and this is going to be done to my rational density. So for example, one property that we will have for the negative one is that this is a strong exceptional collection. So that is the picture for me today. And now, uh, let, me take, let me tell you something about these toll surfaces. I will define them. Definitions. So for P and Q integers, uh, combined integers, a double shell surface, we call that uh, DEPQ, is an elliptic vibration. So you have the Q, and this is going to E1. This is the vibration such that uh, EG, DBQ, is zero, and there are two multiple fibers of multiplicity. E and Q. So the collider dimension of this surface is one, and because this is, these are co-primes, the surface is simply connected. Into that 
fundamental group of PPQ. So these are the double surfaces. And now an application is that here for any for any PQ combined. Uh, there are PQ with an exceptional collection of these vector bundles of length ten. For each of them. Uh, we have that collection, and that comes from, from this. And I will construct the, the situation in a moment. Uh, and I remind you that the other characteristic of those such surfaces is 12. So, and, and we know that if P and Q are 2 or 3, then maybe you have a, a length 12 exceptional collection uh, without our method. Uh, it's not clear that we have it. But then when P and Q are not in the pair to three, then it's impossible to have a length 12. So this is the maximum question. But uh, how many do those edge surfaces? Hmm? And, uh, inside the model space, how many uh, surfaces have such a general? I will construct a singular one that doesn't have any obstructions, and then you see all the dimensions, like in this. So you can go <coughs> and, and get it. Uh, so now I will remind you something about the cyclic quotient singularities, wall singularities, and all the. We try to explain this. Cyclic quotient singularities and wall singularities. So given something like this, where these are co-brand, you know we have the action on C2 given by this. So set is going to be a primitive group of one uh, so that of all the delta. And so the action is like this. So this is an automorphism in the equation. So you have C2 and you go to the equation by that action. And then the image of 0, 0 is going to be singular. And this is by definition our C2 quotient singularity. So for me, the picture is like this, like a cone. And so this is the quotient. And now there are two ways to get rid of this singularity. One is resolution, and the other one is smoothing. And then you recall that you have this minimal resolution. And here you will see the exceptional divisor, which is a chain of rational curve. Rational and the i square is minus the i. Uh, this is minimal resolution, the surface of the minus 2, minus q1, q1. And now these numbers are encoded in the sphere symbol union continuous fraction. Continuous fraction are very important to understand everything here. This is the notation, so that I don't write down that. This is the singularity, so you contract a chain, this is full surface, and you get the singularity. And now there is another way to get rid of the singularity by smoothing. <coughs> 
know there are different smoothings for acyclic corrosion singularity typically. And so there are different minimal fibers. Minimal fibers. Uh, <clears throat> but always in this minimal fiber, you have that the first betting number is zero. But the second might be anything, and this is the minimal number. And so, for the cyclic quotient singularity, you have different smoothings and so different minimal numbers. And there is a deformation space that is going to be important for the collage and barron correspondence of the singularity that has many components. So you expect to have many different uh, minimal numbers. Now we define the world singularity, or I will say something about the world singularities to be used in the construction of the Lorentz surface. Uh, that is a theorem for rational uh, singularity, I think, that the all components have smoothness. So, all singularity. Is a simple quotient similarity of type 1 over n squared, 1 and a minus 1. This is the, so I'm repeating myself, but this is the same as, as a simple quotient similarity that admits a minor number 0 smoothing. So by the way, these are the singularities of when you have the smoothing that keep constant the self-intersection of the canonical class. So the canonical class of this W uh, is up here. Uh, square is, this, is the same as the square of the canonical class of WT, constant. And actually, this is the type of deformation that you see in this collarchefer baron compactification. So the thing is square is constant. And you have to run. Now, the way I think about these all singularities is through the Wilson-Rubin fraction. So, if, <coughs> oh, I can say uh, one real Wilson-Rubin fraction of all singularity, and we'll can be rich, I think, from that continuum fraction, 4, which is this corresponds to n equals to 2 and a equals to 1, a quarter 1 1 singularity, applying the wall algorithm. Which is like this. So if you have a continuum fraction yeah, up to S, then the algorithm, the algorithm is, is like this. You add 1 to x1 and then add a 2 at the end. And then you keep x2 up to x x minus 1, xs, and then 2, or you put a 2. And then do x1 up to x plus minus 1 and add 1 to the end. This is the algorithm. 
All of them can be obtained from here, applying this algorithm. Finally, many times, a way to remember that is the following. And this is important to understand the construction here I will construct curvature surfaces. So the, the, the way is the following, you, you have a nodal fiber of an elliptic vibration, so you know the self-intersection is zero, and then you blow up at the node until you get minus four and then minus one curve, so this corresponds to this four, and now you have two nodes into that, so you blow up, but here is symmetric, so it doesn't matter how you choose that. And then we get minus five, minus three, and then minus one. But now there is there is no symmetry. If you blow up here or here, you have two new situations. Minus two, minus two, minus six, minus two, minus five, minus three, and so on. And that is the way you think about it. So from this, we get all the Exceptional divisors of these walls in the lab. So now I will construct the situation of the W to get WT at all the chip surface. So take tensile, maybe tensile. So consider this pencil, you take a triangle. Take a cubic at a particular <coughs> one. So this is y equals to zero, x equals to zero, x equals to zero. And I want a cubic, so that has an inflection point here. So that inflection point there, and the curve is like this. And if I am correct, this is something. <coughs> For example, you consider that the tensile, and now it blow up nine times, you get a, a liquid vibration, rational reflections. This is interesting. So if you do it four times here and four times there, you get three and three for the fiber, and now you have the triangle, so you get a nine line. This big fiber and then on the triangle. So maybe I can put maybe so one, or two, or three. So let's say that this is a one, this is a two, this is a three, so they intersect from no. a one, a two, a three. So the three gets separated from the other lines, they intersect here. Point. It turns out that you have three extra singular fibers, like this, and you get three sections from the blocks. So there is no space, it's erased. So out of that surface, I will do some blow-ups and contraction to get the W. So out of that surface, I will get the DPQ for any PQ, but maybe I will construct only the two three. This might get messy. And now from S, 
you will do blow-ups over the nodes of the I9, and I will choose one of these fibers, and over the node, I will do blow-ups. So since it's going to be only for two, three, I'll do the following. Minus five, minus two. So on. So from the I nine, you will get uh, nine wall chains. It's just by blowing up. You you can check that this has to do exactly with that. If you have an I two, you can have the singularities, but twice. By blowing up on the nodes. By three, you get three. And so on. By nine, you get nine. And now from some I1, let me choose. Minus four. And also, an important thing is to have a section here. And now, since I want to use the, use the colors from the beginning, So this is my W tilde. Uh, and now by arcing, you contract all the wall chains. Here you have one wall chain. So the wall chain is just a minus four. You contract, you get a W with this chain of rational curves and these wall singularities. So this is the four, and let me say this is the four, and so on. This is the five, two, and two, five. Okay, it turns out that this W has all the assumptions that I have erased. So there are no obstructions to be formed. Uh, we can find uh, this extra divisor, A. Uh, well, this is PG0, Q0. And what else? And this has a contraction to a cyclic quotient singularity. You can check that. Just con contract the, the minus one curves, and you will see a chain of itself intersections that are less of equal than minus two. So this is the resolution of some cyclic quotient singularity. So there is a cyclic quotient singularity. And so I am in the situation as in the beginning. So here you can apply that. Minus four, right? hmm? Also contract the minus four. Yeah, so the minus four is contracted here and all the rest. So you need to contract all of that and you will get the simple portion singularity. So before it was on the right and now it is on the right. Yeah, this connecting minus one is going to be also part. So, so this is the gamma one, this is the gamma two, and so on. That is the important. <coughs> And so from here, you, you get this exceptional collection. And this is the positive one. So if you compute the intersection with canonical class, uh, gamma 1 dot k w is exactly plus 1 over the index. And the index of this so is 2 times 3, with 1 over 6. And for the rest, intersection with canonical class is 0. So this is the positive, it's going to be the positive side. Okay, so now I move to my rational geometry to see, ah oh no, maybe now I go to the collage of the pattern. So you're saying that the smooth thing will be a double uh, circle? Oh yeah, sorry. So you have a situation like this, and there are no structures. So we take the Q-Borenstein smoothing, the one that has canonical class, to Cartier, and that WT will be a double to 3 So where is the double and triple fiber come from? Hmm? Where do the double and triple fiber come from? From so here when you contract, mm -hmm. you will see this minus one is going to be multiplicity two, okay. and all the others multiplicity three, and they will go to the they will see a vibration. So now the collage of the barn 
correspondence. Okay, so in this paper, this 1988 paper, where they propose a compatibilization of the model space of surfaces of general type, there is a section where they study the deformations of quotient singularities, in particular, simple quotient singularities. And they realize that there is a there is a way to to count or to see to, to describe the geometry of all components of the deformation space of this simple quotient singularity. So I put it like a set of divisible components of the deformation space of a simple quotient singularity. This is in one-to-one -one correspondence. So this is collage of a pattern with P resolutions. So what are these? You have the singularity. And now there is a partial resolution, as always, a chain like I explained at the beginning. But now the singularities here are a little bit more general. These are T-singularities. And T-singularity means either ADE, but in this case they are A, ADE. And also 1 over D N squared, 1 DNA minus 1, this is DNA equals 1. Those are the singularities. In canonical class, for the gamma i's, uh, those the gamma i's is positive, strictly positive. Those are pure solutions, and there are finitely many. And for each of them, it corresponds a uh, irreducible component. So how you have this resolution? You take the Borenstein smoothing, and you take smoothings uh, with that property. And then the rational load down are going to be the smoothings of these of the corresponding reducible component. In this situation, there's only one component. So for example, when you have a situation like this, I will say how to count the, the components in, in a moment. You have a situation like this where delta is not four, then this has one component. Ah, uh, sorry, with a one. Well, that, that also has one component. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, the, there is only one big resolution, with this, which is the minimal resolution. And, and the formations of these are the... So this component would be the arcing component, where you have this uh, simultaneous resolution. Instead of looking at the smoothing, you can look at the formations with this curve there. And there is only one. When this is four, there are two components. So actually, there is a way to, a combinatorial way to describe these components. Uh, this is due to Christofferson's. And Stevens. Right after that, okay. So it turns out that for cyclic quotient awesome singularities, the, the important continuous fraction is the dual of delta omega. <coughs> so let me write it here: d1 up to the s. So out of these, you can write equations for the deformations. And you can say, what well, I'm going to say now, that uh, this is in one-to-one -to -one correspondence with these continuous fractions of zero. But not, not all of them of this length, so this S is that S, but the ones that have KI is more or equal than BI. So that is the way you count all the previous solutions. And from this continuous fraction, you can read the big resolution, the singularity set. So maybe, for example, if you have a situation like that, 
then the blue one is something like this, only two. And typically, the only thing that you can do is to, to consider one, only two, and then one. And, and this constructs to, to zero, so this will be the only zero continuous fraction associated to, to this. And so you have only one component. But when you have four, you have a situation like this. And so you have two now, you, you, you have this one, but also you might put the one in between. And that is exactly the one that gives you the Q Warren Stein smoothing of the quarter one one single. That is why we have a different. Okay. So <clears throat> so from here you also have these one to one correspondence now with M resolutions. Oh. And these are exactly like this over the Sigmund singularity, but now with only wall singularities. In canonical class, dot gamma i's is bigger or equal than zero. So like these are the canonical, and these are the minimum. And how you get this? Well, when you have a situation at this singularity like that, then there is a partial resolution with only wall singularities. How many? D. And if you have an A singularity, you resolve it. And that is exactly the M resolution corresponding to that P resolution. And this is due to Venn I think it's and now finally we have the end resolutions. Of the same. So it's a similar situation as the end resolution, but now it's negative. It's not that difficult to guess. So P gamma i is smaller or equal than zero, but this is not the only thing. You, you wouldn't have a one-to-one -one correspondence with only this requirement, one singular. We need something else, and I will explain now. And by the way, this is the thing that we did with Jenny. And resolutions. And those are going to be the ones given this strong exceptional collection. Okay, so I will define these end resolutions and then I will explain the vibrational geometry and that's it. definition of end resolution. So you take an end resolution and for an end resolution there is an end resolution. So given uh, end resolution of an end resolution I'm going to put it like this say so that this is the M resolution, so positive, and you have the wall singularity, and this is over uh, this uh, situation where you have the same number of curves. So the same number, these are wall singularities like at the beginning. The wall singularity is the same number of curves over the same singularity such that one, two, three, 
Now let me we say that gamma i plus and this is the w plus is going to be a w minus k w plus is delta i over n i minus one and i. So these deltas are, are important. These are the numbers that appear with the intersection of canonical class. These are the indices of the singularities. And now here, let me write a w minus is so minus delta bar i over, and here n i bar minus one. Okay. Because there are going to be a relation between the deltas. Okay. So first, which is a bit complicated to explain, let me, let me say that the delta uh, uh, delta bar i is exactly the delta r minus i. So let me check if this is one, so plus one. Yeah, so they, they are reversed. So, so if, if, if here you have a delta 1, then the delta 1 will appear here. Here you have a delta 2, the delta 2 will go there. So they are reversed. Okay. This is the first so the line that makes sense. Then, <clears throat> Well, the important property is that the intersection is negative, not zero. And also, when you contract until uh, gamma one up to, say, gamma mm. of the minus, you go to some cyclic quotient singularity, delta t, one omega t. That is going to be the same as contracting these other ones in the opposite order. Gamma r minus t plus one plus gamma. So the contractions so the same. So, so if you take this one in contract, it's the same as that one in contract. And the singular point, the first one, so p. Zero plus is going to be the same as the last singular point here. Yeah, yeah my. Last is equal to So these are the end resolutions. Uh, you will see, I, I will show examples in a moment. Let me talk about the rational geometry. And you will see how, why. These properties are relevant. Why we have this situation is unknown and poor. My question is geometry. So, for example, to keep in mind uh, one situation, uh, always when you have a cyclic portion singularity, you have the minimal resolution. The minimal resolution is an end resolution because the when you intersect by a junction, this is the self-intersection positive minus two, and that is bigger or equal than zero. So we are okay. And smooth points are okay. They, they are also wall singularities. But then, with the same length, you have a situation like this for the M resolution, where you really do have singularities, and you have all the <coughs> Okay, so now by rational geometry, uh, because I so <clears throat> let us come back to the the beginning. So we have a situation like this. It's not a D. So in a situation like this, we can talk about minimal models in the following way: if KW is left, 
Then we just call this minimum. <coughs> Ignore. Where well, and, and it happens that A lambda B is net for all B. So you will have a the generations of minimal surfaces that are projecting to this W where the canonical class is left everywhere. That is happening, for example, in this of the equation. If it's not left, then there is a gamma, which is a B1, inside of W, so that gamma goes to W negative. And then you have three situations. One, two, three. So if gamma square is also negative, then we have a rational transformation, which could be flip or divisorial contraction. And I will explain that in a moment. This is the important part. Or if W square, so if you don't have this equation and W square is zero. Then it turns out this that this W over D is a smooth deformation of rule surfaces. And if W square is bigger than zero, then that WD is P2, and this is a degeneration of P2 with wall singularity. So what we call Markovian plane. This means E2 is generating to a double wall singularities. So this is completely described by hacking and problem. Okay, so flip and divisorial contraction. Well, the idea is that you do the free of the divisorial contraction, and after that, you will have a situation like that again, and you keep going until it's finished in a situation with canonical class net, or this, or that. And explain the flips. And then I will tell you how to go from the positive to the negative. Now we have in the paper a proof that if you take an M resolution, like the combinatorics, the, the corresponding continuous fractions on an M resolution, there is a way to transform that into an M resolution. So there is a completely combinatorial proof about the existence and uniqueness of this M resolution. But also then, we prove using bivational geometry that you can reach the M resolution through anti-flips from the M resolution. I was hoping to explain that. So I have 10 minutes? Eight. Seven. Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the situation of a clip. We have this W. There is a this rational curve, which is between two or one wall singularity. Those are going to be wall singularity. Uh, and this is the general fiber, WD. Here we have a situation that is similar. W for the historical contraction. But now in here in the WT, you will have you will have a curve, which is a minus one curve, that it generates the form to this particular one. So when you apply the historical contraction, this is Castelnuovo goes to a smooth point. And then 
turns out that the contraction of this curve is going to be a wall singularity. And so we are again in a situation of, of a few Einstein's name. In this situation, you have a contraction, but and, and there is nothing here. So there is no lifting of this gamma, and there is a contraction over a cyclic quotient singularity. Let me this gamma bar. And now we need to flip. So you will take this out and change it for another gamma bar with wall singularities. And the same now with the so that now this curve for the canonical class is positive. Now what happens, so when you run this MMP, is that you can check, this is very explicit. By the way, this is, this is explicit. And it's due to money of uh, and then also hacking better than me. So we have this explicitly. And what happens on the flip is that at least one of these singularities, the index decreases extremely. And you know, when you have a disorder contraction, the typical number decreases, so it has to stop. You can see it, it's not like esoteric. It is something that you can see. Now, this is the important part. I have two, two minutes. Uh, in the situation of a flip, so you have this. This is going to be a field resolution over a cyclic quotient singularity. This is all, all happening over a cyclic quotient singularity. So this construct to here and that two. This construct for cyclic quotient singularity. And here you have a negative, and then you put an i that also constructs here. But it turns out that the situation of the negative part is 10. So in general, it's going to be an infinite situation. You have a chain, an infinite chain. So put gamma 1, gamma 2, and so on. And where the singularities get worse and worse, there is so for the indices of the, sing the singularities, one can write something like this. So the next index is this delta. The delta appears always with the canonical class when we intersect. So this is delta over the indices here. This delta is everywhere. It's like a an invariant of the cyclic quotient singularity that admits such big resolution. And, and, and then when you admit this, you have these families of negative situations. And now, finally, I can define the... So, <clears throat> so, that, so, so from this, there is a first one, second one, that there is a sequence here that is given by these are the, the indices of a, a similar law. And now, when you go from positive to, to negative, and, and that is where we use that we don't have obstruction, so you, we, we can consider that deformation, that is going to be our anti anti -flip. And now after that, you keep going, and this is the operation of an anti flip or maybe you are on the right and, and you do the same. So you might go from negative to positive, and from positive to negative, or from negative to negative. This is that. When you have, so this is an end resolution. Uh, this singularity is going to be that singularity, and so this is exactly, if this is the end, so this is an end resolution here. This is exactly the end resolution. And then, so I don't have time, but when you have these, Chains that I was talking at the beginning. 
we have an action for each of the curves given by this situation. So it turns out that on the curves, we can always consider these anti-flips. And then that produces an action of the break group on the chain. So we have an action of the plus one on these chains, and which is geometric. So you can check that the geometry of the W. And it turns out that that translates to the mutations with this exceptional collection going from a positive to a negative. Okay, that's it now. Any questions? So, where would the exceptional objects be coming from? So, the theory was about so you have exceptional objects on the you form them of the singular fiber. These exceptional collections, where are they? Yeah. So, there are smoothings for so when you apply this, since we don't, so we can prove that at each time we, we still don't have any instructions, so we have these smoothings all the time. And so we can consider this anti flip going from positive to negative, which is the problem. Because if you go from negative to positive, it's okay. You can always do that. From positive to negative is the problem. Then you have the general fibers here. And for each of them, you have these collections. And it turns out that the collection here and there, they relate by a mutation on the corresponding objects, depending on where you are using this R. Where are the collections of bundles coming from? They are coming from the singular. So here we have the singular surface. So there is a construction from the singular surface as in the beginning. This is the WP. So from this situation where I have all the assumptions, they are satisfied. We construct the collection. And then when you do the scientific. Then we have a new situation, we have a collection, but it turns out that this collection is a mutation of the collection. So this build of surfaces with the error dimension one or yes. Yeah. So can you hope to get phantoms on them or not? Well, yeah, we need to complete the collection. Well, of course. And then. But, but there are no, like, in principle, maybe. Maybe. Let's work, right? Joe and Lee. Yeah, Joe and Lee, they found a full collection on the D23 with line bundles. Oh, and they found see. a maximum length. Maximum length. Yeah. Oh, right. There is a line bundle. And they proved that there is a fun. Oh, okay, okay, so we've got it. Yeah. If there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again.